Welcome to St. Stephen's. We gather here to help one another grow in love for neighbor, self, creation, and God. We are here in love, and we're glad you're here. Whenever you are joining us, we hope that this pre-recorded service of devotions finds you well. We have in-person worship here in Terre Haute on Sundays at 8 and 10, and Thursdays at noon. Let's begin this morning with Psalm 99. God reigns, let the people tremble. God is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. God is great in Zion and is high above all peoples. Let them confess the name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. O mighty ruler, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of God, our God, and fall down before God's footstool. God is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among the priests, and Samuel among those who call upon the name, they called upon God, who answered them. God spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud and kept the testimonies and decrees that were given to them. O God, our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of God, our God, and worship him upon the holy hill. For God, our God, is the Holy One. the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men Moses and Elijah talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. Just then a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, How much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astounded at the greatness of God. The Gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, Jesus is up a mountain with three of his followers in an event we refer to as the Transfiguration. It's one of the central stories in the Gospels. It's also one that continues to confound and challenge its hearers. Less surprisingly, what happens up the mountain always seems to overshadow what happens down the mountain after it. The disciples, who had just returned from traveling all over and healing the sick themselves, are now stymied, while Jesus, Peter, James, and John are away for a handful of hours. I think this encounter should be read as their being filled with just as much confusion as the transfiguration, because the disciples should be able to handle this problem. That's why Jesus' words tear right through me whenever I read them. You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? They hammer home at the moment of what seems like intense failure. Well, it would be so much easier to talk about the transfiguration. Its fallout is far more troubling. And I have long held the conviction of not avoiding the hardest question in the text. So, what do we make of this cry of frustration from Jesus. This insult to the people, a statement that seems as directed at the disciples and the crowds and the poor guy who came as the bearer of bad news who just wants his son freed from demons. I don't have any easy or comfortable answers. What I do have is an assortment of less than comfortable responses. And here's the one that tickles my attention the most. When the disciples go out into the world themselves, two by two, they're able to be like Jesus. And when Jesus seems to give three disciples special attention. Suddenly, the group is not up to the task. We also see in the coming chapters a constant sense of competition, which derails them and leads them to constant confusion. There's something about the way they see each other that seems to get to Jesus. The words, however, sting. And they don't just sound like the voice of his frustration, but his judgment. And yet, I also don't take them as permanent or descriptive. Right? He no more appears to be saying this is definitive of all time then he is also just blowing off steam. Both of those seem inaccurate, insufficient for what's happening here. I suspect that these are words of disappointment. Not because he thinks we are bad, but because we are capable of so much more than this. In other words, Jesus knows what we are capable of, that we are capable, talented people, and that we are always worth the effort. Let us offer prayers to the Holy One of Sinai, whose glory shines on the face of all peoples. 
for the Holy Catholic Church throughout the world, sharing the death and resurrection of Christ, especially the Anglican Church of Kenya, the Diocese of Brasilia and Haiti, creation care agencies and their efforts, St. James Newcastle, and our 7th Street Church neighbors. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Jennifer, our bishop, Drew, our priest, Debbie, our deacon, for all who minister in Christ, and for all the people of God. Lord, have mercy. For all the nations and peoples of the earth, especially Ukraine and Russia, and for justice, mercy, and peace. Lord, have mercy. For all who are needy, desolate, forgotten, suffering, lonely, and disconsolate, Lord, have mercy. For the dying and the dead, and for those who mourn, Lord, have mercy. For those who have asked our prayers, Ellie Thomas, Krista Bond, Pamela Reed, John Hegedus, Sally Newland, Robin Rolt, Johnny Western, John Newland, Justin Mendoza, Mytel Wilson, Corinne Dewey, Christine Chillington, and Alex Vincent. Lord, have mercy. That all the world may reflect the splendor of God and all peoples share in the divinity of Christ. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, our families, and all those we love, those celebrating birthdays, especially Mackenzie Ritchie, Lord, have mercy. Remembering the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord. Blessed are you, God of light eternal. Hear our prayers for all peoples and let your glory shine upon us that our lives may claim your goodness and our works give you honor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.